Hey, welcome back. So have you ever run reinforcement learning using, for example, stable baseline three on some visiting scenario? And like, here are your graphs, right? Like, they're different, and some of them don't learn, right? Have you come across this? If you come across these graphs, you want them to look more like this, right? These graphs are on the exact same scenario. And the only thing that's changed between these two graphs is a single hyperparameter. And there's no cherry picking here. I just ran these a bunch of times. Um, so what's going on here? So let's take the save file from the end of training of this run here, and we'll open it up and run it. All right, so we can see straight away what's happening. The model's doing this local optimum thing where it like, it always goes right. And if the monster happens to be in front of it, it'll shoot the monster. Like half the time, the monster's on the right and it'll shoot it like this. But as soon as the monster's on the left, like this, then it gets stuck. And this is after like 100,000 steps and it, it's not improving. So it's basically not exploring, it's just like, I'm just going to go right because that sort of works for me half the time. It's like, I always have to go right. So we need to make it explore, basically. So how do we make it explore? And so I'm using stable baseline 3. I'm using PPO. And how do we make that PPO explore? So PPO, out of the box, doesn't necessarily explore very well. But we can make it explore using entropy regularization, which if you've watched my videos before, you'll know I'm kind of a fan of entropy regularization. And the only thing that's different between these graphs and these graphs is entropy regularization. Okay, uh, so how do we do entropy regularization in PPO? So here's the PPO constructor, right? And we can see we've got ent coef equals 0, 0.0. Not very documented, kind of mysterious. Uh, if we scroll down, it says entropy coefficient for the loss calculation. It's pretty mysterious, but we can look into the source code. So let's look into the source code. All right, so this is the source code for the PPO algorithm. Uh, so you just go to like stable baseline 3 PPO, PPO .y. Yeah, so we can see the loss is made of the policy loss, which is basically the, well, the policy loss, like the equivalent of the reinforced loss, uh, plus the value loss, to encourage the value function to learn. And then we've got the entropy coefficient times the entropy loss. Now, where does the entropy loss come from? Well, it comes from this term. Uh, it's the mean of entropy. And that comes, where does that come from? That comes from here, self.policy.evaluateActions. And where does that come from? So if we go to common policies.py and we go down to the actor critic here, Act a critic policy, like this is what's used by PPO. Um, and then if we scroll down to uh, evaluate actions, right? And we can see that it's basically calculating the entropy from the distribution. Uh, if we burrow it down through this little rabbit hole, we're going to find that this is, is the entropy, just like what we were calculating before in, in my previous videos. Right, so that's how we can get entropy regularization in PPO. Now, is entropy regularization useful in PPO? Well, actually, it's not quite as useful as I found it was. So I found it essential with reinforce. Uh, with PPO, it's sort of useful, but it's less essential. But I, I did a lot of experiments. Like I ran a bunch of experiments. So let's have a look. So these experiments is on the basic VizDoom. VizDoom basic scenario. We can vary the entropy regularization here. So basically, this gives control. This just is a selector for the names, right? And the way I named these is so zero underscore zero underscore this is 0, 0.0. So this is there's no entropy regularization. So uh, we're running over 100,000 uh, steps. And then this is the reward from minus 200 to plus 60. And we can see that sometimes it learns really, really well. But like once or twice, it's learning less well. Now, this is like my best result. When we go to uh, defend the sender, the entropy regularization is less necessary. It just gives a very slight boost. But I'll show you my results, right? So in basic scenario, without any entropy regularization, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, now, I 
to try it, um, so this is zero point, if you make this underscore a point, right, so this is 0 0.0001, so this is basically almost the same as having zero, so entropy regular, regularization is 0 0.001, almost the same as no entropy regularization, a lot of the time it works, and then a couple of times it doesn't, and then we can increase to 0 0.001, it's looking a little bit better, but we still got like one where it didn't really learn, like, but compared to like, one where it didn't really learn, one where it it, it, it was kind of late, but it got there. Uh, if we go up to 0 0.01, now they're all learning nicely. There's a couple of like bits where they go down, but generally it's looking nice. Uh, beyond this, it's possible to make the entropy regularization too high. So a reminder with the entropy regularization, what it does is it forces the agent to explore. What it does is it encourages the distribution over the actions to be more equal. So without entropy regularization, the probability might be like, oh, I'm always going to fire in this situation. So it always fires. And it never thinks about trying anything else. It'll just always fire. So it doesn't try things. It doesn't explore. It's just like, oh, I fire. I get some points. That's great. Right now, the entropy regularization forces it to add some probability to mass to the other actions. So like, oh, so I really want to fire, but you know, I'm just going to write, go right anyway, or I really want to fire, but you know, this time I'm just going to go left, right? It forces it to try some of the other options. But if we make the entropy regularization too high, it'll just be random. It's like the original random model where it's always random. If it's always random, of course, it's just going to be rubbish, right? So we can't make it too high. Anyway, so if we go to like zero one, actually, that's not too high yet. Like it's still getting a decent reward of 60. Like 0 0.1 is, is okay. It's it's actually pretty good, actually. If we go up to like 1.0, so this is like make the underscore a one, right? Sorry, make the underscore a dot. So this is 1.0. So now the reward's gone down to zero, right? So 1.0 is too high. Like if we compare that to uh, 0 0.1, right? So this reward goes up to 60 or 70, but 1.0, this is too high. And then uh, we actually end up to 10. And then it uh, got like a negative reward, so that's obviously far too high. Um, yeah, so basically on this basic scenario, if we use an entropy regularization of about 0 0.01, maybe 0 0.1, that gives pretty decent results. Um, 0 0.001 is a bit too small, and 0 0.001 is just like no entropy regularization. So this is basic. This is the best set of results I got. Uh, I also went to defend the center. I, I ran a lot of experiments. On defend the center, we get slightly weaker results. We don't get this random stuff. It always learns. So let's look at defend the center. So this is defend the center. Uh, let's start with um, no entropy regulation. So I did two sets of experiments. And this one, we're going up to 100,000 steps. Uh, this is no entropy regularization. And we can see that they all succeed in learning. And uh, they get up to somewhere between about seven reward and ten reward, like ten and seven. Right now, so what happens is in the defend the center, it seems like the scenario is sufficiently random that the the agent naturally tries things anyway. I didn't find that in reinforce. In reinforce, I needed them to be regularization even for defend the center. In fact, especially for defend the center, like it was just my agent in with reinforce was just firing in front of it all the time because there was like a a monster spawning in front of it. It's like, oh, if I just fire all the time, I'm going to make some points. Uh, it died really quickly, so it never made many points, but it got a couple of points each time. Uh, with the PPO, the PPO, more powerful algorithm. Um, so it's actually getting between 7 and 10 points. But now let's add, throw in some... So this is 0, 0, 0 0.001, basically indistinguishable from no entry regularization. We go up to 0 0.001. So it basically, it's it's learning just the same, but it gets a bit higher, right? So instead of being from 7 to 10, then our reward is like between just below 8 and nearly 14, right? So nearly 14 compared to 10. It's quite a lot higher. Um, 0 0.01. So basically, in for the defend the center, like 0 0.01 seems to be like the optimum. And the exact entropy regularization is sort of like, an empirical question. Uh, all right, if we go up to 0 0.01, that's too high, and 0 0.1 is way too high. I think I actually went up to 1.0. Oh, I did. Yeah. 
Um, so for defend the center, 0, 0.0 to 1 is good. But uh, this is kind of my best result for defend the center because I did some other experiments. So in these, I went up to 100,000. I was like, well, what if we went up to 200,000? Like, so I, I, let's try that. So basically, when we go up to 200,000, it doesn't make that much difference. So, all right, so let's start with no entropy regularization. So that's this. So with no entropy regularization, it ends up between eight and nine. It's actually worse than after 100,000. It sort of decays somehow. Uh, let's go to 0 0.001. Uh, so this is like indistinguishable between eight and 10. Go up to 0 0.001. So now it's like a little bit better. Like it sort of peaks very quickly. So here it's getting up to 13, but then it dropped down. So by the time we've gone for 200,000, it's less clear that we need the entropy regularization, but it helps a little. Uh, 0 0.01. So I think the best result here was 0 0.001, which I think is a better result than like 0 0.0001. Um, but it's less strong than when we stopped at 100,000. So basically it looks like for the PPO, the entropy regularization is less necessary than for the reinforce. It's less necessary if you're going to train for a really long time. Like it seems like mostly uh, the PPO will eventually learn, but sometimes it will take longer. Uh, but it, it could be something handy to add in. As far as like what is entropy regularization, how is it calculated? I've got another video where I go into like how to calculate it. Um, and so we've already gone through how to do it in PPO. It's really easy. You just put in, uh, yeah, yeah, you just put in ENCOF. Yeah, cool. All right. So I hope, uh, this was interesting, useful. Um, please add into comments, like things you want to see, things you want me to try, experiments you want to run. And, um, yeah, I hope to, if you got this far, thanks. And I hope to see you in another video.